This is part 49 of my series on my Engage Model Railway project. Previous parts covered the project from its inception through the creation of the baseboard, selection and laying of track, building of scenic items, obtaining rolling stock, etc. The project is ongoing. This part de deals with corridor con coach connectors, that is, bellows connectors between one mainline corridor coach and another. First, a detailed background and review, and then some running video. I had seen these connectors listed on eBay, but I didn't know quite what to make of them. My interest was stimulated when I picked up a couple of coaches that came with bellows connectors fitted. I already discussed these in an earlier video on LMS rolling stock. These coaches came with bellows with two folds fitted to both ends of the coach. When the two coaches with bellows were connected to each other, as at the middle of this picture, the bellows made a complete connection. Where one of these coaches was connected to a coach without bellows, the two-fold bellows didn't quite reach across the gap, as you can see on either side in this picture. These were older LMS coaches, not the very first ex-Midland ones immediately after amalgamation, but not the later Stania coaches. The train with them ran fine on the layout without any instances of uncoupling or derailing. So I decided to see about getting some more bellows connectors and trying them out. I bought two packs like this on eBay. The price was £4 a pack, though of course I also had to pay shipping to Canada. These connectors are available in styles for several different types of coach. LMS Stania, LNER, Gresley, GWR Collette, BR Mark I, Mark II, Mark III, all from the same vendor and all for £4 a pack of 10. I bought the ones sold as LMS Stania, although in fact I found that though they worked for earlier LMS coaches, I couldn't get them to work usefully with current production Stania models. I was somewhat confused when I received the connectors, as they didn't come with any instructions, and the link in the eBay listing for instructions was to a site that no longer existed. What came in the bag was pieces like those shown here, plus a lot more little oddly shaped pieces. I wrote to the vendor explaining my confusion, and he emailed me a PDF of instructions, and explained that the odd small pieces were just offcuts that got included in the bag by accident. So, what you see here are the actual pieces used to make the connectors. They do all come flat like this. You have to bend them up and assemble the connectors yourself. This is how a single three-fold connector is assembler, assembled, requiring four pieces. The two main pieces, one with top slits and one with bottom slits, are bent in opposite directions. Then the two pieces are carefully interlocked together by meshing along the slits. Once meshed, the bellows is squashed down. Not that easy to do, requires some care and a bit of poking to get it to scissor in line with the slits. Finally, plain end pieces are glued to either end of the connector. Since this is intended to be a permanent connection, I use the rocket card glue that I use for assembling card building kits for this. A steel ruler is useful for creating sharp bends in the connectors. Here are a couple of the three-fold connectors made up as per the instructions. The instructions say to use something called tacky wax to attach the connectors to the coaches, the objective being to attach them firmly but not permanently. Tacky wax is not sold in Canada, and it was going to cost me something like $50 to import some from the UK, as well as taking time. So I looked around for other temporary gluing options and bought this Tacket repositionable glue from Amazon for about $15 Canadian. The instructions say that coaches should be joined by attaching one of the three-fold connectors to one coach and then just a flat piece like the ones on the end of the connectors to the other coach, as shown here. So this is what the coaches look like when coupled together. Note that this is different from the first coaches I bought with connectors. Those had two-fold connectors on both ends rather than three-fold on one and just a flat piece on the other. Here are these two coaches on the track. These are Stanier coaches by Graham Farish. Unfortunately, I found that this initial experiment using the connectors as instructed with the Stanier coaches did not work well. They looked okay, but tended to derail the coaches when they went round bends. 
Here's a typical derailment that occurred when trying to use the connectors with the Graham Farris Stanier coaches. And these coaches run fine without the connectors on. It is the connectors that are causing the derailments. I did subsequently struggle quite a bit trying various techniques, but I was not able to produce usefully reliable results running the connectors on Farish Stanier coaches, so I gave up with those and went back to running them with no connectors, and they run fine that way. I didn't give up on the connectors entirely, though, as, uh, as I knew that some running could be achieved, as the first pair I got with connectors uh, ran OK, the first pair of coaches, albeit with the connectors mounted differently. I tried the connectors with older type LMS coaches, although they were sold as being for Stanier coaches. I had considerably more success with this, and was able to run a train with connectors between all of the coaches round the layout without the connectors causing the coaches to derail or uncouple. I extended the experiment as I bought two packs of the connectors, 20 in all. I got better at assembling them more quickly and easily as I did more. I fitted them to another rake of older LMS coaches, as instructed, flat pieces on one end of the coaches and three-fold connectors on the other ends. Of course, the front coach behind the engine doesn't need a connector at the front at all, and the last coach doesn't need a connector at the back. I now had two rakes of old LMS coaches fitted with the connectors and was able to get both rakes to run quite successfully. And they certainly do improve the look of corridor trains, although of course the distance between the coaches is really too much, but that's just necessary for modelling where curves are tighter than reality. These older LMS coaches were able to work with the connectors even round tighter curves down to 11 inch radius on my inner section and up gradients. And here are the two rakes with connectors in Colville Station. I made a couple of connectors with two folds rather than three by cutting off one piece at the end of each side before folding them. These were to go together with the first two coaches that I got which came with two fold connectors on both ends. I added these two-fold connectors to coaches, which I then coupled up with the original coaches with two-fold connectors. This made another train of four coaches with connectors, which worked fine this way. I did also try the two-fold connectors with Stanier coaches in case they might work better, but even with a two-fold connector on one coach and a flat on the other, the Stanier coaches still kept dis derailing. So, mixed results. Failure with the Graham Farish Stanier coaches, but success with older type LMS coaches, although these were supposed to be connectors for LMS Stanier coaches. I did also try them on a rake of Daypol LNER Gresley coaches that I have, but they kept derailing those as well. For whatever reason, they seem to work better with older coaches. Now let's have a look at some video of running with the connectors on the layout. Oh, hey, this is a bit of an odd exercise, and I'm going to try and demonstrate something here that I don't expect to work. I don't expect it to work because I've tried it numerous times before and it didn't work. But I figured I should try and demonstrate it on camera. So these are current production Graham Farish Stanier carriages. And I've got here one of the cardboard bellows connectors on. I'm just putting a bellows connector between one pair of carriages here. Now, I've tried this numerous times before with no success. They always either derailed or came uncoupled. But let's see what happens now. Let's close the point to that siding so we don't run into that. And let's see what happens. We'll put some power onto the outside. Hmm. I'm not sure we even got that far before, so. I think we've derailed now. Not spectacularly, though. No. I think we did derail, actually. 
actually slightly there, but then we came back on the rails again when we went across there. <laughs> well, there you go. Just goes to show you, if you want things to go wrong, they won't. See, now that has derailed, I can hear it dragging. But then it, it comes back on the rails again when it goes across the railing track. Well, that's working better than I ever got it to work before. I never got it to work that well before with the, with the Stania coaches. I got it to work with the older coaches, but I never got it to work that well before with the current production Stania coaches. That's gone around several times now. It is on the outside track, which has the, uh, the widest curves, which helps, of course. Okay, let's stop that a minute. Okay, now I've cleared the inner, the outer line of the inner circuit. I'm going to see if I can try him on there. So we'll put the crossover on. See if we can run him over the crossover. Oh. Put the outer sound card on, I guess. him to derail in the tunnel because that's a major pain if he does that. He almost seems to be derailing himself and then writing himself now. I can hear him derailing, but then he seems to get back on again. Yeah, see here? I don't know if you can hear that, how he's grating as he goes around the corner there. But he isn't actually coming right off anymore. Certainly the most successful I ever got this to run. I never got it to run. I never got it to run round at all without either coming completely off the rails or coming decoupled before. Okay. Okay, since that first effort was so surprisingly successful, I'm going to see if I can put a connector between the other two carriages so now they'll all have connectors so so I've got a connector here as well as between the brake and the middle carriage I've got a connector between the, the middle carriage and the front carriage mm -hmm. forward a bit, so I've got somewhere to rail this other carriage. Whoops, well that's not railed right in the first place. Now it is. Okay. So now we've got bellows connectors between both pairs of carriages. So all three carriages are connected up by bellows connectors. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, don't you rail in. Oh, God. And, of course, it came off in the blithering uh, tunnel, which is the one place I don't want it to come off because that's such a pain. Uh, you know what? Oh, and that one came off now as well. So that spectacularly did derail. Let me see if I can get the train out of the tunnel without lifting the tunnel. Hmm. I'm not surprised it derailed. It would, of course, it's Murphy's Law that it would choose to derail in the most inconvenient place possible. I managed to push him out of the tunnel. There we are. It certainly derailed. <laughs> okay, but at least I managed to push him out of the tunnel. So I don't know. I can lift the tunnel. The tunnel can be lifted, but it's awkward to lift the tunnel. So, uh, well, so it, it worked. The, it, with one coupling, it worked. With connector, it worked. But it, I mean, I'm surprised it worked the first time, quite honestly. I could never get it to work, even with one pair coupled with a bellows connector with the current uh, Stania coaches before. Um, it, it, it just it never seemed to work with them. So my general feeling is these bellows connectors are just not suitable for using with the uh, the current the, you know the current production Farish Stania coaches. However, I do have some other trains with older co LMS coaches that they do seem to work okay with. So let me clear the tracks and then I'll I'll get one of those out. Okay, I've cleared the tracks of the derailed Stania coaches and parked their engine into a siding. And now I'm going to try and bring out a train that did work with the, the bellows couplings before. Of course, based on current performance, it probably won't work now, but it's been around quite a few times before and worked okay. These are older LMS coaches. Uh, they're all Graham Farish again, I think, but they're older production Graham Farish, and they're, they're not Stanias. They're the earlier type, high-waisted sort of um, coaches. And I did reset the point. I mean, although there's no guarantee, I did get these to work before. connectors. I don't know whether you can see that, but I'm going to try and take him across the crosswalk. Take them across the crossover now, as I did the others, onto the inner track. Don't derail in the tunnel. Now, see, there you go. And these are, we got four coaches here, all connected by, um, all connected by bellows connectors. So there you go, there's a train there, as I say, of the four of the older coaches, and they're all connected by bellows connectors. And they were running, they'd been round several times fine before. Side track again now. Uh, getting over the crosswalks always a bit awkward. Hmm. Oh, the sound box has reset itself. Annoying thing. What? Because he didn't get smoothly across the crossover, the sound box reset itself. He's now on the outside line, and I'm going to, if possible, try and put him back in his side. And Signal. 
and then we'll set the point on the siding and see if we can back these into the siding. back in their siding. Now, if I can remember which point that is, that's point number two, I've got another train with older coaches also in a siding back there, so let's see if we can bring him out. Now this is another train also with bellows connectors, also, also with Older coaches and bellows connectors, and this is e oh dear. Well, the engine's derailed there, but I don't think you can blame the. I don't know why that is, but I don't think you can blame the. I don't think you can blame the bellows connectors for that. It's probably just the engine wasn't railed very well. I may have shaken the board at some point. Jubilee to Falga. Mm, as much as I have seem to be having problems here, they seem to be with, with the engine. <sighs> I'm not very sure what's happening here, but I think the engine may not be railed very well again. Yeah. Nope, it's not railed properly. The engine is not railed properly. Carriages are drifting backwards. I think I, the problem is I never did get this engine really railed properly. Now I don't think. So let us attempt. It's not easy to do between one thing and another. He's tender driven as well. Oh, hey. Let's see if I can. I think the engine is now railed properly. Let's see if I can pick those carriages back up. the crossover here. Oh, and we did not succeed in getting over the crossover, but hmm, we did not succeed in getting over the crossover. Ooh. Well, that's clearly, a, that is actually a problem with the bellows connector. They're tricky things. I, I was had moderately good success with this this train running, but yeah, his bellows connectors have definitely got in a tangle there. The, the the crossover is one of the worst things, of course. Mm, no, the 
these are not at all working well, are they? Nope. Nevertheless, yeah, well, this is what I told, I said it probably, the ones that worked before probably wouldn't work properly now, but I had pretty good success with these working before, even though I'm struggling a bit with them now, with these older coaches working, whereas I really never had any success. I, I've just basically completely given up trying to use the bellows connectors with the newer coaches, but I haven't given up with these, I think. Okay. If I've got everybody railed right, maybe we can go around the inner circuit now without problems, let's hope. A slightly heavy train, perhaps for this engine to pull up this gradient, but... And of course, the bellows connectors functionally tend to make the train heavier because they make the coaches turn more stiffly. So there you go. True, I derailed him coming across the crossover there, but, and I was having trouble with the engine being railed at first, but let's see. Generally, oh, is that just dirty track or what? I don't know. Wasn't going very fast, and there's a dirty place on the track, probably, that's probably all that was. I have closed the crossover now. We're coming across the crossover now, but we're not crossing it. We're just going over it straight. And we got over there. I mean, some things will derail going over the crossover even straight, just because it has high guide rails, even though they're not turning over it. Just the guide rails will knock some things off. But I don't think that's the problem with these. The problem with these was the turning. It, it's hard for the coaches to turn when they've got these bellows connectors on, but they do look nicer with the bellows connectors on. I mean, they do look nicer with the bellows connectors on. And generally, although I had that, the, the, the coaches derailed over the cross over there, generally I had fairly good success with these uh, older coaches with the bellows connectors. And these are made exactly the way the instructions tell you to make make them with three folds in each bellows connector and just a flat connector on the other side. Um, yeah, I believe that's correct, yes. Now I did have, I had a couple of coaches that came with them on already and they hadn't been assembled the way the, um, the instructions said. Instead of putting three folds on one and a flat on the other, whoever had assembled those coaches had just put two co folds on both of them. But anyway, no, wrong controller. It's not going to do anything because I'm not operating the outer control of the trains on the inner line. Well, there you go. I think I'm just going to stop that train. Oh, maybe I'll bring him round to where the camera is again one more time. Push my luck, but... This is the Jubilee Trafalgar on the uh, pulling this guy. The Trafalgar itself does not like that crossover very much, I must say. You could see him wiggling a bit as he went over that crossover, and that's just because of the guide rails. It's not because he's moving sideways at all, but he did manage to stay on. Handsome train with the nice crimson Trafalgar and the, uh, and the, and the old, uh, nice old uh, coaches with the lining on the side of them. So there you go. Moderate success here and there. Um, my ultimate feeling, yeah, my, my feeling is I'm, I'm going to keep the bellows connectors on these coaches, but I'm not going to keep them, I'm not going to make any further attempts to put them on Stanier coaches because I generally had very little success with that. And I did also try them on some newer Gresley, uh, Daypole Gresley coaches, and they didn't work on those either. They just derailed them right away. 